name Zoe Dollars. Like, where did that come from? Ah, uh oh. <laughs> See, it was at first it was Zoe Crack, like oh, yeah. MySpace days, and then when we all trans, when we all transferred to uh to Facebook, <laughs> I just changed it to Zoe Dollars. Okay, okay. <laughs> So was that your first rap name, Zoe Crack, or did you? What was your first rap name that you first came out with? You remember? Man, where Greg at? <laughs> I got one of my day ones here. My my brother right here, Jay. They probably remember. I don't even remember. What it was, Jay Young Zoe, right? Oh, Young Zoe. It was Young Zoe, right, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was Young Zoe. Okay. Young with a U though. Oh yeah, Why? Like yeah, we ain't do the whole spell it correctly thing. I see. Because uh, Dallas is not spelled right. I looked for it. It was like, Dallas? That ain't how you spell it. Okay, so you're on tour with Future, Migos, ASAP. How is that being on tour, like such a huge tour? I mean, besides the the names that's on a tour that, that's holding the weight, Shots to Migos and, you know, Big Bro, Future, me, myself, Tory Lanez, ASAP Ferg. I mean, what more do the people want to see? Right. You know, like, Future, he's just, he the king, man. He can't even, not because he's family, but he is what he is, you know. And then Migos just went four times platinum with Bad and Bougie, so that's like the world hearing they shit two times more than what they heard it. Right. So do you feel pressure going on tour with them, or does it make you, like, want to level up, or you feel like you're already on that level, like, we all are on the same level as artistry? Uh... I actually learned a lot from everybody that's on the tour because I like I watch them perform. I learned some of their techniques, and we all just learn a lot from each other, you know. Like Tori watched me perform; he takes some stuff from me. And the Migos sometimes they like, "Yo, we like how you did this, how you did that." It's just a learning thing. It's an experience. Right. Every touring is an experience for every artist. Yeah. Are y'all having Are y'all having fun on tour? Like, is it just turned up all the time? Because I know with Migos, it's like. As soon as I play the playlist, I'm turned up. So, how's it being on tour with the guys? Uh, we definitely having fun and we doing records and stuff like that together. Mm -hmm. Playing ball for money, pranking each other. It's it's a fun situation. Like, okay. man, this this is my first major tour, so it's kind of a tough situation. But thank God for Facetime. So. Yeah. That balance is out, and every time like I got free time, I'll go back home. Um, what do you have coming up? Like, what what albums beside the tour? You dropping any singles? What you got? Uh, well, I I always say being busy is a good thing. Mm -hmm. We just got well, I just got added on to another tour, the Future Hendrix tour. It's a world tour this time. It's going to Europe, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna yeah. touch the cities that we didn't get to touch in the United States. We're going to do Africa and Europe, so it's a good thing. For the rest of the year, that means I'm caught up. I'm about to drop my new single that's coming out with Chris Brown, Post and Delete. Okay. And then I got a project coming out. We was ha we kind of have it, like, me and amongst the team, we kind of having, like, a, ba a battle for the um for the title, so we don't know yet, but soon I'll have a title. Ready. Right. But the project is finished with everything finalized, We're just waiting on the label to give us a date. Okay, that's official. So, um, I noticed that you had, like, the Haitian flag, Haiti flag up. Are you from Haiti? Uh, I was born here, but I was raised in Haiti. Okay. Yeah. So, how was life in Haiti for you? I mean, you the, the typical third world country life, you know. <laughs> what is that? Very <laughs> humble. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know, very humble. You get to see people who don't have nothing at all, and they're happy. And you get to see the people that's fortunate to have everything, but it's still a third world country. Right. There's only so much you can have, but it's a humbling experience, you know. It takes you away from all the stuff that, like, clouds your mind and stuff, you know. Yeah. Social media is not too big over there. Like, everybody really know each other. Like, when they say it takes a village to raise a kid, like, the whole town really knows you. Yeah. Yeah. Misha, where you at, Misha? You got no questions? I know you got some questions. Of course I got well, come on and ask some questions. Okay, that's it. Uh-oh. Oh, 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 Does it go down in the DMs? Um, I try, not, I try not to dive too much in the DMs. And I try to, like, you know, keep it at a at a minimal because screenshots is dangerous. Yeah. Man, they dangerous, you know. I, I done DM a few fans back. 
Like with the thank you and with the heart, and next thing I see the tag, oh, so we dollar to fly me down. My daughter, give me a second. Yeah, man. But I be getting the weird DMs of like the old ladies with the weird titty. What? <laughs> man, I be getting like, the weird DMs sometimes. So I be like, God, like I just got a DM this morning. Some girl talking about farting her mouth. I'm like, what? Oh, I'm like, time out. I'm gonna just deactivate my DM. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now we see you on Twitter. You be tweeting just wild stuff, I man, all the time, like random. Is that stuff that you're actually seeing and going through, or you just just making it up all the time you're here? Uh, my, with my Twitter, I like I watch the things that surround me, like the shit my friends go through, the shit that like I go through, past things I go through, and I just put it together as a tweet because I know it's like humanly relatable stuff so people don't always retweet stuff that they could relate to and I just try to tweet realistic shit you know as harsh as they may sound sometimes and be like yeah her feet ugly or a bitch fat <laughs> I just tweet it cause oh I be tweeting shit like I love dark skinned women and then all the light skinned women be going crazy on me I be like god damn and stuff I'm, I'm big on just tweeting things that I really feel but I'm trying to keep like a filter on my tweets because I be watching the other artists. I don't know if because they big and they limit their tweets. But I'm like, you got a Twitter to tweet. Like, what you scared of? Yeah. You, know? I know. you tweeted, I hate popcorn. Why you hate popcorn? <laughs> First of all, I want to say chocolate women are winning right now because, you know, it's summertime. So we all chocolate, but the extra chocolate is glistening. So I just want to say that. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Growing up in a Haitian household, we never really ate popcorn, so so when I do eat it, I just be feeling like it's be leaving shit in my mouth. I just don't fuck with it. And then I didn't. I never know it was like a like a it was a safety thing to feed kids popcorn. And I gave my son popcorn, and he almost choked out on me in the movies. And I was like, oh no, I really don't like popcorn now. Popcorn. Now I have to ask you. Now that you are have this platform that you have, and you see a lot of things that are going on in the African American community, a lot of artists don't want to talk on it because they don't want to mess with their brand, they don't want to mess with their money. Do you ever feel the need to like speak out on some of the things like with Fidel Castro or things that we've seen with black men being shot? Uh, honestly, I feel like half. Of, I'll say ninety percent of the time, it's not no race thing. It's uh abuse of power because black cops is killing black niggas too so it's not really oh i see a black dude let me kill him because because he's black in some cases it do be that though and then we do see the justice because dumb cops really do go to jail like we don't look at the ones that go to jail we only look at all oh, those that don't go to jail but we fail to realize it's not a racial thing. It's really abusing their power, using that badge for what, it's, what more than it's supposed to be used for. You're supposed to protect us, and you're using the badge to destroy us. So I speak on it because I could give an opinion that I feel like is honest and a lot of other, other people could relate to it. But as far as like, oh, it's a white and black thing, man, I got a lot of white friends. I love the hell out of white people. Some of them are the coolest people ever. And... Some of us black people be more racist towards them than them towards us. Be like, ah, oh, man, especially coming from Miami, oh, fuck that cracker, man. That cracker tripping. And I just be like, dog, do you realize that you wouldn't even like it if them people talking about us like that? But, you know, different strokes for different folks. I just try to follow what I was raised to follow. I just want to say, like, with that topic being brought up, um, a lot of white people don't know how to act around us. So y'all got to give them a little bit of credit. They're not used to being around us, so they don't know how to act. Yeah, <laughs> they don't know how to act. It may be offensive to us, but they don't know how to act. So you got to put that put that in your mind. They're not necessarily being racist. They just don't know. So next time y'all want to slap somebody, just think about it like that. <laughs> so anybody else have any questions? Cause we gonna get back. What's your question? Uh, for somebody like myself who is trying, you, you feel like you have what it takes to break that barrier, it's like you're looking at it. It's like, you know what I'm talking about. It's like you're looking at it. It's like, damn, bro. You're just looking at it. What, what advice do you have for somebody like that? Sometimes it takes you 10 good years for you to get that one good year. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, coming from my city, the last person to make it out was Ross. And that was, like, 10 years ago. And this generation, the last person to make it out of my city, for real, was me. So sometimes it really takes you that time, you know. It's all about time, and if it's not your time, it's not your time. You could never beat time. You can only be on time. You can either be late or be on time, but you can't beat time. You can't make it before your time because then you're going to go out even faster than what you did, you know what I'm saying? You got to put in more work and try different techniques. Like, if rap don't work for you, shit, try something else. Right, right. You know, try, try writing and get in the game by writing a song for somebody. You know, so... It's just different. It's different things, dog. Because a lot of people's talented. Like, it's niggas in my city way more talented than me. But hard work beats talent any day, bro. The connections, you know, having the right people around you and just going around the loopholes and stuff like that. You know, like, try not building your fan base on your city because sometimes your city is not what makes you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, build with the DJs. Me, personally... The DJs made me pop. Right. I didn't, I didn't, that's, I'm building my fan base now. You know what I'm saying? The DJs is really what got me where I'm at. Tell them again. The DJs. Like, I had one of the biggest records because of the DJs, you know, and I was, I was um, doing what they needed. Drops and dub plates, whatever they need, like, you... If you make a dub, it's like a cheat code. You make a dub plate for a DJ, man, you doing the biggest shit for them. They like hearing their name. They gonna have, and if the record is hot, they gonna play it. And then on top of that, you not being one of those niggas that's like, it's not about money sometimes. No DJ in my city ever asked me for a dime. But guess what? When they had a party going, I pulled up. Two, three hours, seen them. Oh, yo, Zoe, can I put you on this flyer? Hell yeah, how much you want? Nothing. I ain't got, I ain't, it's not interfering with anything else I got. Put me on that flyer. Let's go. I'm going to pull up. Sometimes they just want you to fuck with them, you know, and then build your relationship with, with the radio people and shit like that. Because the fan base going to come. If you putting out good music, it's going to come. Like, I got fans around the world that I never even knew until I got on tour. And then you got to always know the world is bigger than your city. Always bigger than your city. Your city is just a dot. Everywhere else is way bigger than your city. So you got to look beyond just your city and let me try to make it out of here. Nah, try to make it out of the other places. Mm -hmm. And then come back to your city. Because sometimes your city not going to follow until everybody else follow. Oh, I'm so happy you said that. Because so many artists approach me like, what do I got to do to make it? Can I get you to interview me? Like, it's not necessarily about you asking us to come and interview you and that. But it's the work ethic that you put in. And I mm -hmm. I remember me and Zoe, we were talking before Revolt, you yep. came as a fan. Right. Second time around, mm -hmm. you came and performed. Explain to them about your work ethic, networking, and investing in your craft, putting the money back into yourself, and making those sacrifices, pulling up to those places, and speaking to those people who you think that normally wouldn't speak to you. They just might be actually watching you. Right. Right. Um... When, when Revolt, Revolt played a major role in, in me blowing up as well, too, because all the execs that was in my city, all the DJs that didn't know about me was there, and all they kept hearing was my song, my song, my song, my song. So it played a major role for me coming in as a fan into the following year, me performing. And then this year, you just never know where it's going to take me. I might just be a host on there or something. But you just got to put in the work and then... You just got to be around people that believe in you, dog. Like, and then your team got to know that it's your time. You can't be amongst people that feel like they stars, too. Like, you got to be around people that's going to lift you up. And then when you get up, you're going to bring them up with you. If you're around 60 other rappers and all y'all rap, it just won't work because y'all ego is going to clash. You might not have an ego, but they got an ego. And then that energy is not even good because... They looking at you, you think that's your dog, that's your day one, but they your day 10 at that moment because y'all coming from the same place and you elevating and they not. So sometimes you just got to be around people that's really supporting you and knowing that they putting you in that circle for you to make it and then they going to come. Like, 
all your D ones is for sure not gonna be with you. Right, it is. D for sure. I love everybody. I love the whole team to come and talk about myself. Yeah, sometimes it's gonna be like that. I got, I got two of my D ones with me. They, they, I got two of my D ones with me. It's my homeboy, Greg, AP Greg, and my dog Jake. My dog Jay don't rap. He just been there for like he been there since I was listening to freestyles and riding around rapping. And my other one with Greg, I used to catch rides in his brother trunk to make it to the studio. So they were me, and I got a lot of my day ones that's not with me because they feel some type of way, and I didn't change. They did. So you gotta understand, people gonna change on you. They gonna want to distance themselves because they feel like. Oh, that's my dog. I don't want to dick ride him. In reality, you're supposed to dick ride your dog to make your dog get to where he really want to go. Because that's my homeboys. They treat me like a superstar. They don't care if they see me, Neil, or anybody else. They with me. They're like, oh, we with Zoe. <laughs> Real shit. We with Zoe. They, they big me up. They like, they big me up. Like, this our superstar right here, bro. So you got to be around people that's going to uplift you and stuff like that. I got a question. We, we, you know, I got a podcast, a YouTube show. We call All for Culture. So we like to ask, what got you into the culture? Like, why? Like, what, 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 what made you fall in love with it? And who were your early influences? Um, my favorite rapper, and my all-time influence is Jay Z. Okay. So, from listening to my sister stealing my sister CDs and mixtapes and stuff like Hot 97 stuff, that's how I fell in love with rap. And I just like copied all his rhymes and break it down and make my own rhymes out of it. Like my first passion is airplanes. I, I want to be a pilot. So music was never my thing until I fell in love with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you get a private jet, you gonna fly it, you gonna fly it yourself. <laughs> Are you gonna do it? Yeah. That's a, <laughs> hey, save their money, save their money. We got one more question and then we're gonna get back into the mix. Uh, do you have a question? Okay. Hi Zoe, um, I'm um, Hancho B. I'm actually a local promoter here in Houston. So um, my thing is that I have a lot of underground artists. Now, um, a lot of them, they don't have a support system, which is my background. And I feel that um, everybody needs a support system. If you have family, if you don't have family like me, I don't get along with mine. But the reason why that I am an underground promoter for an underground artist is because they probably don't have a support system and don't have that steps. So what I'm doing is all I do is put a foundation down and they can take it from there. If they stay with me or not, it's okay. But sometimes they get a little big headed. And when they go to a show and then they, well, well, nobody's here and this and that and whatever. But I'm saying to you, it doesn't matter if it's one person, 10 people, five people, you're on that flyer. So that means that you have to perform, give it your all. So right. what is that ego with them that makes them feel like if nobody, if I don't have a, a room full of 100 people or 25 people, I'm not going to pull on the show. What is that about? I mean, rappers are known to have an ego, period. Like, rappers, period. Because what they rapping about is not matching and shit like that. Like, Nobody knows them yet. That's the so thing. It's, it's going to take It's gonna take for them to really perform in a crowd full of people that's going to boo them, for them to understand right. that they got to go crawl before they walk. Because even now, I have one of the biggest songs in the country. Some of the venues I go in, it's... 50 people sitting right. down because I'm the opener on the tour. Like, I perform, doors open at 6, I perform at 6.40. But you still perform, right? I still perform. Exactly. And some days I'll be like, I'll be, how do you say this? I'll be um, disappointed and I still go out there and rock out. And them 50 people, they all on my Twitter, all on my Instagram. Yo, we fans, what song was that? And stuff like that. So it takes time. This shit is not one, two, three. You know, right. people don't accept rappers like that because right. everybody rap Luke, Dookie and Pookie down the street rap so what makes you special therefore you gotta really like you gotta really build a fan base you gotta give people a reason to accept you as an artist as a rapper or whatever you're saying and then you gotta make sure your image match that music and whoever it's coming from is a strong standpoint for them people to be like okay I fuck with this person because a lot of rappers come out to be fraud. Yeah. So them people don't want to sit there and support you and then you come out. It's some real fuck shit about you, your story not real. So 
you got to go from the five people to the 10 people to the 15 to 20 to 30 and then start getting your way into a lot of shit, opening up for people. It's all about building and it, it don't take six months. It don't. Sometimes it takes years. It takes two years, three years. And shit like that. I used to perform in front of 10 people that's looking at me like zombies. <laughs> like, really looking at me like zombies. And then I go back, them same 10 people is going crazy when I perform there. So it's all about time and then being patient and, and really building yourself as an artist and show the people that's all you are. You're not a comedian or you're not a trapper trying to be a rapper. You're an artist and you stand on that platform and be that. So just make sure y'all network and uh, support one another. And thank you, Zoe, for coming out wow. and interviewing with us. Thank you, Misha, for asking these questions because I was, you know, I had a few questions I ain't prepared like you that. Know, but you know, you do your thing. That's your thing. That's your thing. Hip Hop Weekly in the building. So y'all make sure y'all network with any, everybody. We got DJ Pretty Brown in the mix. Shout out to Soul Lounge for letting us throw this event. Shout out to Tito's Vodka for supporting us with the vodka. Y'all make sure y'all get y'all some drinks. If y'all going to the concert, Sorry, y'all make sure y'all get there early. Support my boy Zoe. Hey. And if you go to the after party, make sure I'm on the list so we can get in that thing. And let's talk up. We still here for a little bit.